The nice folks at the Hunter Line Company has just come out with a brand new, really cool covered bridge kit. This is a picture that came with the packaging. Looks like it's going to be a fun project. As all Hunter Line kits are, they come with a whole bunch of dimensional lumber that you cut up and make into things. And of course, the Hunter Line people always have the best directions. Not only do they have lots and lots of step-by-step -step directions, but they also have lots of photos. They even show you what you're going to need to build the kit with. Pretty cool, huh? My personal favorite, though, are the blueprint type directions that you tape onto your workbench. And then from there, you build the parts right on top of the blueprint. It makes it really easy and fast. Cool, huh? And we're moving right along. I've got the double-sided tape on the blueprint and putting the pieces on so they stay in place. My favorite tool is the chopper 2. Anytime you have repetitive cuts, there's nothing like a chopper 2. It makes nice clean cuts. And of course, there's no such thing as too many handy helpers. I have lots of different weights and, and all kinds of stuff that I can use. And of course, when you're using glue, use the least amount possible to hold things together. As you're removing these parts from the blueprints, be very gentle. They're not very strong yet, especially until the glue dries well. And here you have the side during construction. And with these sides, once again, I've used double-sided tape right on the blueprint. When you attach the sides to the main deck, make sure they're nice and square, 90 degrees. And here's the finished inner bridge. I've built this bridge in, in scale before, and this HON3 just feels so big. It came out really nice. Now we're in the major construction phase. These roost joists, you have a whole bunch of them, 19 of them you have to make, and while the glue's drying on those, you can get started on your sides. And once again, look at all the handy helpers. I got all kinds of stuff. When you're manufacturing these sides, make sure that it's inconsistent. You want to leave it a little bit rough because, of course, they were never built very strong. And the weathering liquid, my personal favorite, comes from the Hunterline Company also. Here's a nice close-up of the color. When you do these colored walls, make sure it's inconsistent because that's how real life looks like. And they come out real nice. What are you going to do about track? The instructions specifically say not to lay flex track on there because it looks funny. So I took some flex track, took off all of the cross ties, and then I glued that part directly onto the bridge. And of course, as it's drying, you got to use some more handy helpers to keep it in place. Looks like it ought to work. Well, basically I got nothing else to do, so I thought, how could I make it look better? So I'm putting in guardrails also. Certainly not going to be any easier once it gets a roof on it. And speaking of the roof, boy, that was a lot of work, these individual roof joists. you got to be really careful because the only attachment point is on the bottom and you got to hold them in place until the glue holds on. I didn't like the way it was flimsy, so I added an extra support running down the middle of the top. Okay, while that glue is drying, it's time to think about what are you going to do with this bridge. I went out to my workshop and found an old piece of styrofoam drew a little bit on it and what I might like to see what it looks like at the end and here's the rough cut this is what the display is going to look like of course it's got a long ways to go on the roof the roof joists are inconsistent so you got to make sure when you put the subroofing on that you keep it in place long enough that the glue can dry and oh here's a possible little problem this kit comes with a wonderful shake roof but after I colored the shakes they just all curled up. So we'll see how that'll come out. In the meantime, I put rolled roofing on it, and it makes it look okay, but I, I'm not quite satisfied with the roofing yet. I might work on trying to flatten out that roofing material. And as you can see, the bridge is really looking good, other than maybe the roofing, which will take some time. It's back to the house, and look at my press. Remember I told you about those roof pieces that were curling up? This is how I get things to go flat again. You soak them for a bit, and then you squeeze them together. And this is what it looks like after they've been squeezing for mm, two days, and you'll notice that some of them have already started to curl back up again. So some will work and some won't. So what I had to do is each layer, I had to very carefully hold it down until the glue held it in place, and even then some of them still moved around. Now as you put the glue down, you want to have two stripes of it because, well, it doesn't lay really flat. So you got to make sure those points get glued. And then of course, don't forget the top knot. And you'll see that some of 
those roof bits are kind of still crooked. Moral of the story, make sure to put the roof on before you color it. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. What do you think? Looks really good to me. I like it. I'm really pleased with this particular kit from the Hunter Line folks. If you play in pretty much any scale, they'll have one of these for you. Okay, it's back out to the workroom and we're working on the base. You'll see that I put some gravel on and I also decided to add a couple of rocks. I love these rubber mold rocks. Now the trick with the molds, make sure to get them wet before you put the goop in them. I like to use Durham's water putty rather than, uh, oh, I don't know what that other stuff is. And then of course you put some more glue on, you're getting ready to put the other stuff. I always start out by putting the track on, in this case the track that's connected to the bridge, and I lay it down in the glue and then I put the ballast right on top of that and then you want to make sure to give it some weight to hold it in place and then you go through and you add some more of the other scenic stuff and I just put a bit of this here and a bit of that there just kind of putting it together and then my favorite part is putting all the extra tidbits on and look at the track there it came out pretty nice the ballast came out pretty darn nice and just kind of put bits here and pits, bits there and and oh don't forget about the trees because the trees always fill a scene out nicely and of course you got to start thinking about what kind of stuff's going to be in the track oh oh and don't forget telephone poles I love telephone poles I always make them myself and I use easy line for the wire how many times in life do you find a telephone pole with no wire on it well here you have it a wonderful covered bridge from the nice folks at the hunter line company I built a number of their other bridges and this one came out every bit as good actually thinking about the roof it probably came out a little better I like the way the color came out in it I like the way it looks it's just a nice bridge you might want to give the hundred line company a little look and see if they've got something for your place so have fun thanks for joining me today